All right, so this is uh, lesson 32, session three, and we're going to continue learning about the coordinate plane and how coordinates relate to each other uh, with the notes for this. Now, the first thing you see here is the warm up. Um, you should have a warm up sheet uh, already that has an attached answer key. Now, just try it on your own with these questions, answering using this grid and using these questions here, and then just see how well you did with the answer sheet that's attached. Um, there's no grade for it, so just kind of see how well you do, kind of a self-check. Uh, the warm-up for this lesson is basically showing us what the lesson's about. Like, it's basically about um, seeing how the data relates to each other, like your X and your Y, like what they mean to each other. Um, but that'll make a little more sense after we do this. But let's start with this question. Um, and this isn't in your note, in your uh, textbook. This is just something to kind of follow along with. So Mel has $10. He sells apples for $5 a bag. How much money does Mel have if he sells each number of bags? So this is like a real life problem where like, just picture yourself having 10 bucks and then you have these things to sell. So you want to keep a running count of how much money you have when you're done selling everything. Um, so you start with $10. And then if you sell each bag for $5 a bag, if you sell one bag, you have uh, $15. Just simple enough. But um, And then if you sell two bags, that means you add another $5 on there. If you sell three bags, that means you've got $25. And then if you sell the fourth bag, that means you're gonna end up with $30. So the while the math is super easy for this, what you're really looking at is kind of recognizing the pattern. Um, so we go from 15 to 20, to 25 to 30. So in your head, you probably can guess like the fifth bag and the sixth bag and the seventh, like 35, 40, 45, 50. Um, so again, just recognizing patterns and numbers is like the main thing for math in general. But that's just kind of a warm up for you. Um, in your book, I'm going to um, go over the notes. And as I write out the notes on the board and in the video, you can write these into your textbook and follow along. Now, you can pause the video at any time. I go a little fast sometimes, but everything should be there. And again, just pause or rewind if you need to. Just make sure you get all the notes that you would have missed in class today. So page 669. All right, so um, very similar question is our warm up. We've got uh, this person, Jenny, and she's got 20 bucks saved in the bank. So she's starting with $20. So just keep that in mind. Um, she earns $10 an hour washing cars and saves all of her money. Graph points in the coordinate plane over here on the right to show the relationship between the number of hours Jenny works and the total amount of money she saved. And include the following in your graph. So you need a titles for the X and Y axes. So see over here, this, these dotted lines, these are for your labels for what these are. Um, the numbers along the bottom, those are clearly the hours she works. So go ahead and write hours in there. And then over on the left-hand side, Let's just call this money. We're gonna keep things really simple. So the y-axis is your money, the x-axis is your hours, and anything in the grid is a running total of how much money you've got. Um, so off to the right for you, um, go ahead and make this uh, t-chart. And let's start with your hours over here, and then your money over here. So starting at hour zero, because again, it wants us to document zero, one, two, three, and four. Before she even starts working at all, she already has those 20, that $20 in the bank. So there's that. She makes $10 an hour. So after one hour, that $20 becomes 30. If she works two hours, it becomes 40 bucks. If she works three hours, it becomes 50. And if she works four hours, that's $60. So there's our, our data for that. Oh, and I forgot one more, five hours. Uh, I can fit that in there. This could be $70. Okay, so 
these plot out like this. Like these are basically your X and your Y. The hours are your X, the money is your Y. So it works like 0, 20, 1, 30, 2, 40, of 3, 50, 4, 60. And you're already seeing like this pattern where this get the straight line. So 5 is 70. And you could you could keep making dots here along this line and see what they would be. But we're just doing these first few data plots. But that's how you can make your own if you're comparing two things, hour and money, um, and then showing like how that looks like on your coordinate plane. All right, so let's turn the page. Um, we're gonna. This is the data table that we made. We just made ours vertical, and they, this is the same exact thing. It's horizontal. Um, and this here is basically exactly what we just did um, on the previous page. So, the order pair one thirty is an order pair that represents the total amount of money thirty dollars that Jenny will make after working one hour. And you can skip make putting the rest of the data in here because we already did that on page 669. But this is basically, if kids didn't understand it, they could get some practice into that, but we've already done that. Let's look at the opposite page, page 671. All right, um, so again, I'll go a little quickly here, but you can, um, you can just basically pause or hit pause on the video to do it. All right, so what does the X axis represent? Um, that is the hours. Jenny worked. Um, the y-axis represents the money Jenny saved. And complete these ordered pairs where x is the number of hours Jenny works and y is the total money that Jenny saved. So at zero hours, it was 20 bucks she had. At one hour, is 30. Two hours was 40, three hours was 50, four was 60, and five was 70. And we plot these missing. We already did this, so you don't have to worry about doing that. How much money will Jenny have saved if she works for five hours? She will have $70. Which point in the graph shows this? 570. How many hours does Jenny need to work to have saved $40? So that we do this the opposite way. Check your hours and see where it lines up with 40. And it lines up at 2, comma 40. Um, how can you use a coordinate plane to represent relationships between two real world quantities? Um, what that means is each, each axis, x or y, can show one set of values. Yeah, sorry again if I'm going too fast. But again, just hit pause if you need to. All right, you can skip six and turn the page. I want us to do a couple practice problems to make sure we're ready. All right, Ferran works in an ice cream store. He uses two scoops of ice cream for each ice cream cone he sells. Underline that, because that's the main idea right here. So for every ice cream cone, you're gonna see two scoops on it. Um, so let's fill in this uh, table down here because all that information is going to help us with this. Um, so we're going to compare ice cream cones and number of scoops. Um, if you have no ice cream cones, there's no scoops. If there's one, there's two scoops, two, there's four, three, there's six, and four, there's eight. You can see the pattern right there. Um, your x-axis is going to be your cones. Your y-axis is going to be your scoops. OK, so let's graph these. So again, these are the ordered pairs, 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6, and 4, 8. So I've got 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6, 4, 8. We've got those graphed right there. 
question eight. Uh, use the table and graph in problem seven. Where would you put a point on the graph to show how many scoops of ice cream be used for five cones? It's easy to be five scoops or five cones would be 10 scoops. Um, five cones equals 10 scoops. And that's what it would look like. So basically you would just go one additional spot. And this last question, multiple choice. Um, what does point two four represent on the graph above? Well, we know the two for the X are cones. And that, and if you look where the Y, where it lines up with the Y, it means four scoops of ice cream. So that is letter C. So not too difficult, um, but it's really great warm up to get you ready for today's IXL. Now the IXL for today is going to be T6. And this is analyzed graph relationships. So you basically already did that with the lesson today. You, you look at the relationship between your X data and your Y data and kind of figure out what it's trying to, uh, to tell you. And you're gonna basically answer some questions based on that. Um, if you have any questions though, uh, don't hesitate to ask me and I'll try to help you out. Good luck.